Welcome to Tales of First Ladies. I'm Eleanor Burns. This beautiful First Lady quilt was made by Linda Carlson with its nine different pieced blocks dedicated to our heroic First Ladies. Well, Linda designed her own unique center block called Wig Rose. It's just gorgeous in tones of regal purple. So it's got sage green and cheerful yellows. It's simply stunning. You know, Linda did a wonderful job of appliquing each leaf, bud, and flower with needle turn and zigzag stitch. The wig rose was named for Benjamin Harrison, the first governor of Indiana. He became the ninth president of the country and the first president of the Whig Party. Today we're venturing into the life of Anna Harrison, wife of Benjamin Harrison. Now Anna's tales began when she was an infant, born in New Jersey, when her mother died a year after she was born. At that time her father, John Cleve Sims, was fighting the British during the Revolution. He decided to take her to Long Island to be raised by her grandparents. Well, according to legend, he dressed in a British uniform and bundled Anna in a sack. And on the journey, questioned by British soldiers, he explained his precious cargo was simply a bag of turnips on its way to the kitchen of the British commander on Long Island. Well, the troops let him safely journey on. Anna was a true frontier woman who raised and educated 10 children in the woods of Indiana. This is her applique block. It is one huge, magnificent flower. Well, it's interesting that the opposite flower is turned upside down, but nonetheless beautiful with its stems and leaves. Well, while she was still alive, this quilt book was dedicated to Anna. In her book, Quilts, Their Story and How to Make Them, Marie Webster identified an 1840 Harrison Rose quilt. Well, that was the year Anna's husband was running for president. This quilts book is a reprint, but it was first published in 1915. It says underneath the photo, Harrison Rose, this quilt is at least 75 years old. Can you imagine? The rose is a piece of old rose and two shades of pink. The stems and the leaves are applique. Pretty amazing. Well, on the next page, it shows the quilting detail. See everything so clearly. Well, today, we're off on an adventure. We're going to make a Harrison rose with paperback fusible interfacing. So join me. This First Lady's quilt has only six inch blocks and the Anna Harrison block has really tiny leaves in it, but it's really cute. And then they're just zigzag stitched around the outside. And take a look, the one on the opposite side is right side up. They're both right side up, so you can do whatever you want. Well, this is actually our fourth block in the quilt. We have already done the Martha Washington wreath, so this is our second applique, and we have our piece blocks as well. Well, I'm going to start on the stem on the Harrison Rose. Here it is right along here. It is a bias strip. You need to find the 45 degree line on your ruler. Right here it is. And place the 45 degree line across the bottom edge. Get it all lined up and just make your first cut. This can be cut into smaller bias strips, but it's gonna to be too short for this one. So then move it over, line up your 45 degree line again across the bottom and cut one and a fourth inch strip. Oh, I just made it. There, good bias. And then so we can go ahead and put it into the flower, just cut off both ends so they're straight. These little guys, just get rid of them. 
So take this bias strip and press it wrong sides together. It's going to be pretty narrow. And then just take one end and fold it up. This is where it's going to be the very end of the stem. We don't want to see raw edges. That looks good. So now I want to make some positioning lines on my background square. This is a 13 inch square. I'm going to just press it in half on one diagonal one way and then take and turn it and press it a second time. I have a placement sheet. I want to keep focus on this X that I created right in the middle. And here is the X on the placement sheet. Line that up. Let me do some peeking through so I get it perfect. Okay, I think I'm just about on there. And with my marker, I just want to mark underneath the big flower and then along the stem line. I'm just going to draw clear down. There's the leaves. Now, if I have not done this quite right, I'm not going to worry because with this pen, you just heat it, steam it, and the line disappears. Okay, so let's get this sewn on. So now we're going to use that line and my quarter inch foot and fold this in half and I'm going to put the raw edge right against that line. Scant quarter inch will do. Okay, I'm going to put my foot down and move to a scant quarter. Good. And just sew right along here with my foot. And you can use your stiletto to help guide you. It's kind of on the curve. It looks very interesting. And right here around. Well, I noticed that Linda Carlson, actually on hers, she went and ran it right off the end of the square. But, you know, I like to keep traditional, and the traditional block was not finished that way. Okay, so I'm right into this little fold right here. I'm going to fold it back up and curve it off to the end. And then I have the first part done. Turn it around here and just cut your threads. Good. So now you can just go ahead and if you're going to do it by machine, just press it over and you can edge stitch right along the edge. I would use, red, I would use some green thread, but since I already have my red thread in, I'm just going to show you just to sew it along there by machine. There, you can see that because I'm probably going to take this out and do it with green. But see, right along edge stitch. And so you can also hand stitch the stem down. That's the four letter H word. This was just left loose. There's my line. There's my fold. I have a needle and thread. It's best to use wax thread so that it doesn't get tangled. And also, I really like to use a straw needle. But to make a hidden stitch, you put your needle right in the background, turn it around, and come back up through the fold. Then pull it through and just repeat that step down into the background and come up on the fold. Nobody will ever know you did it. You know, Anna was the first first lady to be given a formal education. She, it was her grandparents. So she had formal schooling, and she developed into an educated, level-headed young woman. So things were going really good for Anna Harrison. So I think things will go good for me. Let me just finish, finish my stem, and we'll get all of the flower parts ready. There are a number of pieces in this large flower, so I just want to go over them and show you. The first one, the largest one, is this scalloped flower, and it's on the bottom. Next comes a circle. And then I'm calling this pink a four-pointed star, and the yellow on the top is a diamond shape. Now you've got seven triangles four in greens for around the outside edge, and four leaves for the stem. So you're making two blocks, you have to double 
every number that I told you. And so take a look at the pattern sheet. We've got the scallop flower, the diamonds, the star, the circle. It's all here in 12 inch and six inch. I need to have a diamond. So I have my paperback fusible and I cut my fusible just a little bit larger than the piece of paperback fusible. So you see, this is the fusible side, this is the smooth side. I'm marking on the smooth side with a permanent marker. And just line it up and oh, you should be able to see. I'm going to see how much coffee I had today. Did I have too much? Or are my lines going to be straight? But the best thing is, is that you're going to go back. If you're not quite straight, at least you could cut straight. I think I can cut straight. That's good. Now, my piece of fabric for that diamond is cut just a little larger, maybe about an eighth of an inch or so, so that you don't get it on the pressing mat. That's the worst thing. Okay, read your instructions on your paperback fusible. They say no steam and only press for about two seconds. That's not long. One, two. Because if you press too long, you totally make, melt the fusible. You can't ever fuse it down onto your background. So there's my diamond. Like magic appears my scallop flower, my circle. I've got my leaves and my star. Now this is the really fun part because I made a template out of this back triangle. I just don't want to waste a lot of time. And I cut my uh, fabric and my interfacing just the same height. So you can see, you can just turn these up and down. And then when you go ahead and cut, it goes very quickly. Let me grab my rotary cutter and my ruler and show you. So all you have to do is just line up your ruler on the line, cut it like this, and just keep on going right across and you'll have at least the triangles done in a jiffy. That looks good. And then all you need to do is just go ahead. I run my nail along the back side, along the edge, and that releases the paper and then you peel it away. And when you see this shiny side, then you know that you have your fusible on the back side. That looks good. So on all of these, just take a sharp pair of scissors and trim on the line. See, I can cut straight. And then all you have to do, get that paper peeled away. Easy. Do you know that Anna Harrison, for the largest number of children for a first lady. You know, she had 10 of them. And what's interesting is that she outlived nine of her children. She outlived nine of her children. And she was the only first lady that never entered the White House either. Oh, that is quite a story. I'm going to tell you that in just a minute. Okay, so see, you peel that away, you're done with your paper, this is all cut, and it's done. Okay, so I am going to go back, cut out all of these pieces, and then I'll show you how to lay out your block. Like magic, that green thread appeared on my stem. Aren't I lucky? Well, this is my placement sheet. Remember that X right there. We've got to focus on that so we get this on square. Here is the X on my background square. And I'm just going to see if I can move it in and line that up again. I prefer to have it this way. It's kind of hard for me to do upside down. All right. That's looking good. And the little Stem has to go around like that. Good. So let's start with all of our units and we're just going to stack them up. This is my scalloped edge, my little scalloped flower. Get it in place right on there. And then comes the circle. Look at that beautiful red right on top. Kind of get that right in the middle. I need to have my four pointed star 
right along here. That looks good. And then my diamond right on the top. And you kind of offset that like so. That's good. Now, we've got our four leaves down in the bottom. Just going to position them back and forth along there. You can do how you want. Oh, I think it looks better on the other side. Let's do this and offset those. This is growing fast. I used to do all of the uh, raw edge piecing. I'd turn all the raw edges under, but oh my gosh, that takes so long that now I really do like this paperback fusible. You know, I started telling you how uh, Anna Harrison is the first lady, the first first lady that never got to live in the White House. She never even made it. She was ill when Benjamin was elected president. Oh, he was already 68. She said, she cried. She said, we're too old to be president. We're just too old. Well, she was ill. But Benjamin started off with his family to the inaugurals, um, and she was ill. She had to stay back, and everybody else went on with her. Well, he did his inaugural address, and he actually did one for an hour and 45 minutes. You know it's January. You know it's cold. He stood outside in the cold without a hat, without a coat, and he caught pneumonia. And by March, he was gone. She never even made it. To the White House. Oh my gosh, that gave me shivers just thinking about that poor lady. There, I like that. Looks good. So now we're going to give it lots of good steam. Hmm. Well, but something did happen to her. You know that she actually had a, a grandson that was born to her last child that lived. She had a grandson that did become president. And she I'm sure she got to the White House then. She never got there when her husband was president. What do you think? Look good? Let's just flip it over and turn it. Do a little steaming on the back. Like it really well. But something something really nice happened to her uh, by the Congress. Oh, let me turn off my steam. It's going crazy over here. Well, she was the first first lady to be awarded a pension by Congress. She got a lump sum, get this, of $25,000. And this is really cool, probably good for this time. She was the first that had the right to free postage on her outgoing correspondence. That's pretty good, especially at the cost of stamps. So all I'm going to do right now is select a blanket stitch and show you how to sew around the outside edge. I am just taking a bite on my side and I'm just going right in with my blanket stitch. And to make this block look beautiful, I'm gonna sew around all the outside edges. Now that you know how to make one Harrison rose, you can make a whole quilt out of Harrison Rose. It's a beautiful applique pattern. Teresa made this one. She made eight Harrison Rose blocks, and then she framed each block with one and a quarter inch strips all around the outside edge. Well, take a close look at her stitching because she used the serpentine stitch all around that circle, and then she used straight leaves or straight stitching in the leaves. Looks really good. And the stippling around it really frames it. Amy did that for us. And then after she made her eight blocks, stitched them down, framed them, she added lattice and a cornerstone between each of the blocks. They are on point, and so you can see the side triangles right along here and the corner triangle down there. And then she framed it in green and a wide red. It is so stunning. People just go, oh, that's beautiful. Well, I loved the Wigs Rose so much 
that I thought, let's just take that Harrison rose and turn it into an 18-inch wall hanging. Now, you can use this for the center of your 6-inch blocks for First Ladies or just make it as a little wall hanging for yourself. You want to start with the pattern and just reduce your pattern so that it is 80% of what it is now. So you can see I'm using a smaller scalloped flower in the middle. And so just take it, press your background square in quarters so that you have some marking spots. And if you place this right on your center, line up the little scallops with the folds, and you can see where you can draw four stems. Now the pattern that we used for the stems is just right here. That's all it is. Just kind of put it on there and trace those little guys going out. They look like they're really just flying around. Then this is going to go right in the middle. Your circle comes on top like this. And then you could use two of your diamonds instead of your star and your diamond. And you just always think of the match points that you have and then just turn this one like that. So that's your center, very cute. Now, the next one, we're going to finish this out with some leaves. And these are a little bit larger. You can see that they actually go in opposite directions. This is really fun. I love to make little wall hangings like this and just put them in my living room on the wall. Or you can just um, use it anywhere. You could use it as a table centerpiece. I think I've got that one backwards. But let's just see. Put this on there. And then one more leaf. We lost it, but I know I'll find it sometime. And then to finish this off, we're going to go to the six inch bottom flower. The six inch bottom flower, trace off four of those. And they're, they're much smaller, they're very cute. And those are going to go right in the center. Now I know it's really helpful if you can position these. So if you draw a two and a half inch square right off the corner of each one, then when you put your flower down, you can get that in perfect position every time. So what do you think about our little Harrison Rose? I have the most amazing antique quilt to share with you. This is the Wigs Defeat Quilt. You know, ladies that supported the Democratic Party would have made this pattern to celebrate the defeat of the Whig Party, active from the 1830s to the 1850s. Now, the Whig's defeat block is both pieced and appliqued. Traditionally, it was in red, white, and blue. But this one has a touch of green in the diamonds. And these appliqued plumes represent rooster's tail feathers, the symbol of the Democratic Party at that time. Well, the echo quilting just accents the block. And the diamond lattice is incredible. I doubt if I could ever do this. And then look at the block in the corner. You know, the quilt maker ran out of red. She didn't worry. She just used green. And she didn't run out to the quilt shop to buy more fabric. Well, did you notice this small scallop border? This amazes me around the outside edge, very tiny. You know, I soaked and laundered this quilt in the bathtub for four days. It was that dirty. I used a gentle soap called Orvis. That's the same soap used to wash horses. And then I dried it out on my lawn between two sheets. And let me tell you, this was very heavy when I took it from the bathtub. Well, when I decided to purchase the quilt from an antique dealer, I was surprised that the quilt price tag said only $600 and not $6,000. Well, I'll show you why. The quilt sat folded on a shelf for years and the parts touching the wood just rotted away. Now, when I laundered it, I worried about this cotton uh, that was peeking through, but it just stayed there. 
I was pretty amazed. And this was probably a hand dyed. Well, it's a very handsome quilt. But to protect your quilt, you should store them in white cotton pillowcases. Perfect. The Whig Party was formed in opposition to the policies of Democratic President Andrew Jackson. And in its 20 years of existence, two of its candidates, William Henry Harrison and Zachary Taylor, were elected president, and both of them died in office. Well, the party was destroyed over the question of slavery, the end of an era. And you are just beginning. Enjoy celebrating the bravery of Anna Harrison while you applique her block.